guys, it's Billy from Sweetie Darling and this week I'm going to show you how to make a pumpkin patch cake because October. We have made it. We're in October. We're in autumn and I can't tell you how happy autumn makes me. Golden trees, cooler air, pumpkins everywhere. I was driving somewhere the other day, a whole field of pumpkins. Oh, that, that makes me it's so incredibly happy. Pumpkin spice everything. Pumpkin spice cappuccino. Yes. Pumpkin cake. Yes. Pumpkin cookies. Yes. Pine cones. I'm going to get some pine cones out. I've got a pumpkin candle I'm going to light. I've got a gingerbread candle I'm going to light. All this can happen because it's autumn. So of course, for my first tutorial in October, I had to do something autumnal, verging on Halloween-y, but not quite Halloween-y completely. So I thought a pumpkin patch cake would be the perfect way to ease us in. Okay, so for the pumpkin cake, I have brought you over to this side of my kitchen. It's been a while since I have recorded sort of me speaking as I'm doing something. And the reason I wanted to do it today for this pumpkin cake is to shine a light on this mixer. Do you see? Do you see how pink this mixer is? So this mixer, I was basically emailed a couple of weeks ago by this company asking if I wanted to try the mixer. I looked into it because I didn't want to try something that was probably going to be rubbish and realised it was Bon Chef, which is the brand of my hand mixer that I use all the time. So as soon as I saw that, I was like, yes, would love to try it. And I got to pick a colour. So ofs, I got pink. And genuinely, I know you're not going to believe me, but I didn't, I didn't plan this. I didn't plan to match the mixer today. Maybe you weren't thinking that. Maybe I'm overthinking this. But either way, I didn't plan it, but I'm happy that it's happening. I'm very comfortable that there's this much pink going on here. Shall we get on to the pumpkin cake? So to my mixer, I'm adding 115 grams of butter, 175 grams of caster sugar, 140 grams of light brown sugar, and then I'm going to mix those a little bit. They're not going to go light and fluffy like normal butter and sugar would because there is way too much sugar compared to butter. So you can see there it's gone kind of like a sandy consistency. It's never going to go light and fluffy because there is so much sugar compared to butter. So that is fine. And next I'm adding two eggs and a teaspoon of vanilla. So you can see how much more smooth that is looking now compared to the sanding consistency of the butter and sugar before. And then the rest of the ingredients I'm just going to add in in one go. So I have 250 grams of plain flour, a teaspoon of bicarb, 240 ml of buttermilk, and I've made a pumpkin spice mix. Now if you have pumpkin spice mix you can use that. I have mixed together a teaspoon and a half of cinnamon, three quarters of a teaspoon of ground ginger, half a teaspoon of nutmeg, an eighth of a teaspoon of allspice, and an eighth of a teaspoon of ground cloves. And then I have 300 grams of pumpkin puree. So I like to give my cake mixes a scrape down just to make sure there aren't any ingredients collected around the side of the bowl that aren't being mixed in. And I'm just going to divide this between four tins. Now my pumpkin cake took 40 minutes to bake and that was in a fan oven at 160 degrees Celsius. I always leave my cakes overnight before I start layering them. I just find it much, much easier than working on very soft, fragile cake that's been baked the same day. So I left these pumpkin cakes overnight and then the next day I made up a batch of vanilla buttercream. I will link to my vanilla buttercream recipe underneath this video. But I will say vanilla buttercream does go so well with pumpkin pumpkin cake but what goes even better than vanilla buttercream is cinnamon buttercream so if you mix up a batch of the vanilla buttercream but add in some cinnamon cinnamon's a really tricky thing some people like a hint of it and some people like a really warm cinnamony flavor so I would just say add some until it tastes how you want it to taste but cinnamon buttercream with pumpkin cake is so the day after I baked my cakes, I layered them together with some buttercream and then put a crumb coat around the cakes. And this is just a thin layer of buttercream to fill in any gaps and divots between where the cake layers are and to contain the crumbs within this coat of buttercream. Once the first coat of buttercream was on the cake, I put it in the freezer just to solidify the buttercream. This pumpkin cake is super, super soft. So if you start trying to add more layers of buttercream before it's chilled, it's not gonna happen. It's gonna get very messy. You might even tear some of the cake away. Just make sure the outer layer of buttercream is nice and firm before you start adding more to it. When it is firm enough, you can bring it back out of the freezer and add another coat of buttercream. Now you might find this covers the cake enough at this stage. I didn't, so I had to do my second coat of buttercream, put it back in the freezer, wait until that firmed up, then I brought it back out, put a third coat of buttercream on it, and then I used my Pro Frosted to neaten it up. So I just put 
a load of buttercream on and then I worked with my Pro Froster to scrape around the cake repeatedly until I had much sharper edges at the top and my sides were nice and clean. Now you might find some patches of cake showing through if you've got a side of cake that's slightly nudged over to one side or you might find that there's an air bubble in the buttercream and it's left a little gap there. Just work your way around and cover over any little extra bits that you need to. Now I wouldn't worry too much about the top section here because we're going to do the ganache drips but make sure that it is fairly neat. You don't want huge scoops out of it because otherwise it's going to be obvious even under ganache. My next stage was to add on some sprinkles to the bottom of my cake. For this I actually had ended up putting my cake back in the freezer so my buttercream was, was very hard. If your buttercream is still soft you can go ahead and push the sprinkles straight into it. With mine I had to paint some water around the bottom where I wanted the sprinkles to stick because my buttercream had already set. And I used my Baking Time Club Pumpkin Party Sprinkles which are just the most autumnal Halloweeny sprinkles I have ever seen. So I scooped some sprinkles into my hand and just tipped them against the side of the cake and pushed them in. Once that was done I wanted to add a ganache drip to the top of the cake so I took equal parts of dark chocolate and cream. I took 75 grams of dark chocolate and 75 grams of double cream and I put it in the microwave until it had all melted together. I did let my ganache cool a little bit rather than pouring it on very hot. If you want to whilst you're waiting for your ganache to cool you can either pre-make it or you can let it cool and pop your cake in the freezer at the same time just to make sure the buttercream is nice and cold so when the ganache is poured on it the cold from the cake also cools the ganache quicker as well. When you're ready to add the ganache you can pour it on top of the cake and then I like to use a palette knife. I know some people pipe it if that's if you find that easier you can pipe it you can use a spoon to drizzle it down the side. I find it easy to pour it all on top and then just use the tip of the palette knife just to nudge some ganache towards the edge of the cake. Now if you like the very long narrow drips you need to have a thinner ganache so that will just mean more cream compared to your chocolate. For the top of my pumpkin patch I wanted it to look a bit like soil so for that I've taken some Oreos and put them into a blender I actually have a Nutribullet so I've put some in I put half a packet which was a bit excessive but sneaky secret me and my boyfriend like to have Oreo crumbs on our porridge sometimes so I took that into account so I used half a pack for my cake and for porridge shopping and put it in my Nutribullet and then blitzed it all up into crumbs which ends up looking like soil. So I poured some of the crumbs onto the top of the ganache and left it like a pile of soil and then I took more of my pumpkin party sprinkles from Baking Time Club and sprinkled those over the soil so I had sort of a mix of fun sprinkles and more realistic looking soil. It just jazzed it up a bit, I like the look of it a lot. So once I'd added more sprinkles I then wanted to add some little fondant pumpkin. Now to make my pumpkins I actually only used gum paste actually but fondant would be absolutely fine for this they're not big enough to need gum paste or flour paste so whatever you have will be fine. I've coloured it using the tangerine sugar flare paste colour to get a nice orange. I also added in some autumn leaf to tone down the orange. So with my orange paste I rolled it into different shape balls. Some of them I had as just a plain ball, some of them I squished down into more of an oval shape, some of them I rolled to make them more of a tall long shape because as we all know pumpkins come in all shapes and sizes. Once I had a ball I used a cutting wheel to indent lines around the side of the pumpkin. Now you can just go straight, I do eight lines so straight across in one direction and then straight across the middle and then across the middle of those sections as well so it's just eight even sections. Of course if you don't want them even you can just run your cutting wheel around at random intervals around the pumpkin. On some of them I did also use a Dresden tool to add in some extra indented lines towards the top the pumpkin. Pumpkins have all sorts of textures so you can go a bit crazy with this if you want to. To make little twisty vines I coloured some paste with Christmas green by Sugar Flare and then rolled the paste into really 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 thin sausages, wrapped them around cocktail sticks and just left them to firm up a bit. Once they had firmed up I slid the cocktail stick out the middle and it leaves a really nice coil. And then to make the stalks I coloured some paste with some autumn leaf and then I added some woodland brown and then I just rolled small sausages of this. Now when it came sticking everything together. I indented a hole into the top of the pumpkin using the end of a cell stick. I painted some water inside the hole, took one of my twiddly green vines and pushed that into the hole and then pushed the stalk on top of it. And I love these pumpkins so much. I love them. It literally it just makes me feel like autumn when I'm making pumpkins. I think they're so cute. And then to put them on the cake, you just push them into the Oreo soil. And if your ganache is still soft underneath, it's going to sit in the ganache anyway. So I love this cake. I, it's cute. It's all 
autumnal, it's fun, it's pumpkin inside. Everything about it I love, it's just, I just love it. Of course I will link to the mixer, the sprinkles, my buttercream recipe, my pumpkin cake recipe, everything will be linked to underneath this video so you can find it all if you want to. I should say about the mixer, because that works very well, doesn't it? It comes with, uh, so you get the beater that I use, the normal beater, a balloon whisk if you want to make meringues and stuff, and a dough hook for bread. So I haven't tried it for either of those things, but it worked really well for the cake, so I would have thought it would be so fine with those as well. So if you are getting your autumnal bake on this week, or baking or cake decorating of any sorts, we're not just going to be prejudiced to autumn here. If you're doing any baking or cake decorating this week, make sure you take photos, upload them to Instagram, and use hashtag YesDarling, and I will give you a shout out in my Instagram stories on Monday. I really hope you enjoyed my first autumn video of 2017. There are many more on the way. More Halloween-y, but that just excites me. So I hope you have a lovely week and I will see you next Monday.